Hi hey guys, if you have not seen my uh, Arduino magic trick, you might want to watch that first because I'm about to ruin the secret of that trick. I'll include the link on the description. As you can see, I have eventually succeeded in animating this 8x8 LED matrix without an Arduino. In this video, I'll explain why this is a bad idea <laughs> and I'll also show you a much easier way to do this. So my friend Jay shared some of his loot from the Radio Shack closeout. Thanks Jay. I thought it would be cool to build a project using just what he sent me in this box. Kind of like a cooking challenge where you're supposed to make a meal just out of the stuff that you can find in the kitchen. Oh. One of the things in the box is this awesome 8x8 RGB LED matrix. Tons and tons of pins. I had fun trying to figure out what pins is what. But I thought it'd be cool to drive this using an Arduino and a shift register to display some patterns. Okay, for those of you unfamiliar with an LED matrix, let me just spend one minute explaining how it works. So there'll be a grid, a matrix, and at each intersection of this grid, is an actual LED. So let me draw one here. Now to light up any of these LEDs, basically you find the intersection. So let's say you want to light that one up. You put a plus here, and you put a minus here. And of course, even though these guys here also have a plus, they have no negative. So this is the only one that has a negative. So he is the only one who is going to light up. If you want all three of them, you put negative on all three of them. And then they are all going to be turned on, and these guys won't turn on because there is no positive here. Basically, that's the gist of it. So you pick a row, let's say this row, and then you pick a pattern for that row. And then you go to the next row, and you put a different pattern on that row. So, you know, you could have this one on, and that one on, and on this row, you can have just that one and that one on. And so on and so forth, and you do that very, very quickly. And you have the illusion that they're all being controlled independently. It is pretty simple to hook these guys up to six Arduino pins. And you just put high here and low here, and that one would light up. Pretty simple. And to make an 8x8, you simply extend this. So you will need 8 plus 8, that's 16. Even on a lowly Arduino Nano, we have 0 through 13, that's 14 pins. Plus analog 0 through A7. That's another 8 pins, so that's 22 pins. That's more than 16, so we can actually drive this single color matrix using just one nano. So here it is all wired up. I'm using the 0 through the 7 for the green, which is the negative side of the matrix, kind of like these guys here. And for the rows, I'm using the 8 through the 13, which only made up for 6 wires. So we need Two more wires but there is no such thing as a d15 uh, thankfully on the arduino you can also use the analog pins as digital pins let me show you that it actually works and there it is but remember the challenge i mentioned earlier that i can only use the part that is in that box and even though Jay sent me this, he did not send me an Arduino. It's not a complaint. I got plenty of Arduino, so that's not the point. The point is that I want to do this with just the parts that is in the box. So I scrounged around and I discovered that Jay has kindly sent me these. These are amazing things. They are 80 tiny, 85 and 80 tiny 84s. Basically, I have right there four Arduinos. Very cool stuff. The only problem is that these guys, because they're smaller compared to the bigger brother here, these have a lot more GPIO pins. So these guys have six pins, six IO pins, and these guys have 12 IO pins. Just a little bit short of the 16 that we need. I had to actually use two of those. That's where the problem happens. <laughs> To make these two guys talk to each other, I thought it would be pretty simple because each one of these is using SPI. To program this, as you can see, there is no USB port here. You would actually need a rig like this, where you would use an Arduino, and in my case, Arduino Nano, but any Arduino will do. 
and he will become the intermediary between the PC and the AT Tiny chip. And then once it's uploaded, he is no longer necessary. And that was the key to my magic trick. I thought it was very cool that once I got done uploading the program, he's no longer needed because he is actually an Arduino. All this other mess here is because I want to be able to switch between programming this one versus programming that one. So I thought since he already knows how to speak to the Arduino using SPI, it will not be that difficult to make those two guys speak to each other in SPI. Well, after many tries, I have to admit defeat. I think it's mostly because these are AT Tiny and not Arduinos. I was able to get two Arduinos talk to each other using SPI, but the AT Tiny libraries are typically intended to not talk to another AT Tiny, but it's to talk to a device, a temperature sensor, or an accelerometer. I was unable to get the slave and the master AT Tiny to talk to each other. So after a lot of frustration, I decided to simply just do it all myself. Let me show you how I did that. So as I mentioned, we need two different sketches. One to draft the columns and another one to draft the rows. The one on the left here is the master. He will splatter a particular pattern for row zero and he will tell, go turn on row zero. And then he will prepare the pattern for row one and then he will tell this guy to display row one and turn off row zero. That's the flow of the program. Let us go into a little bit more detail. The setup is pretty simple, just setting up which pins should be output and which pins should be input. Originally, I did write this using just regular pin mode and digital write, and they work fine, but the matrix was flickering because it wasn't doing it fast enough. So after I got it working, I converted the pin mode. Basically, this is doing a pin mode on pin 0 and pin 1. Similarly, these are setting digital write to all the seven pins. They call them PA0 through PA7 instead of D0 through D7. So this is synonymous to doing pin mode for all the seven pins. I mean, it's really cool to be able to do all that in just one line. And this is synonymous to setting all the pins 0 through 7 to off. For the column, high means off. And for the rows, high means on. Just because the way the plus and minus works on the matrix, remember? And here is the loop. So within this loop, we're going to go through all the rows, 0 through 7. The first thing we need to do for every row is we're going to turn off all the columns because we're going to switch row and we don't want them to be like leaving a shadow between one row to another. So we turn them all off. And now we tell the other AT Tiny, this guy over here, to actually turn on row 0. And then I discovered that I have to actually give it a little time. So I'm not sure it's because I'm doing this digital write, or maybe it just takes time for him to actually discover that <laughs> this pin has actually been changed. Either way, that's the reason for this delay here. And once that row is on, this line will actually splatter the pattern for row 0 onto the columns. So at this time, we actually could see the pattern because the row 0 is on and the pattern for that row has been displayed right here. And this is to simply bring the line on pin 9 from high back to low so that way by the time we go through the loop again we will be able to tell when the status change. So we're always going to pick it up when it goes from low to high. And finally we need to actually sit around for a little bit before we change the pattern. If we don't do this then the pattern will just blip really fast and it shows up as a very very dim row. So that's the column side. Oh we haven't talked about the else part. So row 0 is very special because we need to actually be able to synchronize between these two. Otherwise the sketch on the running on the second AT Tiny will not be able to tell what row it's supposed to be on. So that's why this is special. When this pin is on then he knows that he's supposed to reset to row 0. But the next time we're into the loop, when r is not equal to 0, it simply sends a different pin high, and all he does, he will just go incremented. So let's take a look at that maybe. So on this side, the starting is very similar. Everything has to be repeated because we are running a second sketch on a second AT Tiny. So similar variables, similar setup. They're kind of backward now, because instead of uh, setting stuff, most of the time we're actually listening for stuff we're listening for this guy. But we are still having output to actually control the rows. So these guys here, 
controls the column, and these guys here controls the rows. The rest of this code is mostly interrupt driven because I discovered that when I simply look, try to watch it in the main loop, it's just inconsistent. Sometimes it catches it right away, sometimes it doesn't. The heart of the code actually is in this ISR. Every time pin 9 or pin 10 goes high, this routine got called. And so the first thing I, I do in here is figure out which pin it is, whether it's pin 9 and this is pin 8 here. So if it is pin 9, the sync row, which is right there, sync row, then I actually set a variable that is local to this sketch. There is no such thing as a row variable here because this is running on a different computer altogether. So this row here only exists on this AT tiny. So we reset the row back to zero and then we turn on that row, row zero. Otherwise, if it is not the sync row pin nine, if it's not that one, it must be this one, but I check anyway. So if it is that one, then we simply increment it. We just blindly increment the row and then we turn on that row similarly. And then he just basically listens here for those two pins. So every time these pins change a state, we get called here. And depending on whether it was this one or that one, we either increment the row or we reset the zero row back to zero. That's it. I apologize for going through this very, very quickly. But I will post the code so you guys could play with this. And please don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments. I would be very happy to answer the best I can. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.